What's up everybody? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Cosmic Legion's Book 1 Havokatar wave release for Olek Thygar. And this is Olek Thygar as he appears when he's being brought into the Havokatar prison. Uh, I make that distinction because this wave actually has two Olek Thygar releases. And if you go ahead and take a look at my channel, I have a review for the second release up there as well. So take a look at that when you're done with this one. Like I said, this appears to be Olek Thygar in his kind of base uh, outfit or uniform that I... I Assume that he was brought to have Alcatar prison in, and he looks really awesome. The paint on this guy is really like just out of this world. I love all the detail. I love all the different shades of all the different paints on here, and really the density of all the paint is just fantastic. Similar to Kragnar, he's got a lot of uh, scales and stuff on his face and on his uh, neck area, and in my opinion, the blue just really, really accentuates these areas and really makes them stand out and pop. Just an awesome texture and an awesome look to this guy. He's kind of got like a bit of a reptilian look to him, but not too much. He does look like his own kind of space thing, especially with these little horns up here. I absolutely love the metallic detailing on his suit. The oranges and the blues are all metallic, and then the blacks are kind of a matte, and it, the blacks and grays are kind of a matte, and that just really gives it like an awesome kind of texture difference. With the exception being these prison orange pants, they are not metallic in any way. But I just love the detail on this guy. Like, look at how, I mean, even just this, like, little gap is blue. They didn't have to do that. They could have had the arms all be black. Um, these little blue highlights just really sell that this is, like, armor and that this is something that's detailed and awesome. I'm honestly really just loving all the detail on this guy's armor, on his paint, on his sculpt. Really fantastic. Really awesome just standout release of this line, in my opinion. And I think they know that too. That's why they made two of them. Moving on to articulation. He does not have any kind of neck articulation here. It kind of looks like that. He might. A, a lot of uh, figures hide some articulation between the armor and the neck. But he actually has that exposed neck for another reason. <clears throat> but he actually has that exposed neck for another reason that we'll talk about in a bit. His only articulation on the head comes from the actual head joint. But there is quite a gap here. And so you can see he can move all over. Really far left. I mean really far left and right. Pretty decent up and down. And then um, awesome tilt as well, you know, with that cat inquisitive look or something. Uh, pretty decent tilt left and right. And then, you know, combine those for whatever you want. Moving on to the shoulders here. Um, kind of the same as Kragnar. We get about 90 degrees, just about 90 degrees even. Uh, it's hindered a little bit by his by his little shoulder joint right here. Uh, you're going to find that with a lot of these guys. A lot of these guys have these protruding shoulder joints, but I don't see any problem with that. Um, the elbow joint is really good, uh, solid 90 degrees, about as good as you can get from a single joint, right? And then the wrist, just like I mentioned on Kragnar, is kind of those hinged wrists so nothing really to write home about, but they'll twist in any direction and they'll hinge this way. Well, each wrist hinge, hinges in a different direction, and that is one thing I'll praise them about this guy. Uh, but I'll talk about that when we get to accessories. Now, this guy does not have any kind of diaphragm split. He does have a waist swivel. Oh, sorry. He does have a waist swivel. And that'll go all the way around. And it goes a little bit front. A little bit back. Oh, but if you push it too far, and that's what I've noticed a lot with this guy. Um, if you push it too far, you really have to work to get it back in because it'll pop out the joint between his torso and his legs. Moving on to his legs. Really far forward kick. Uh, these are like really soft plastic, so they don't hinder his articulation at all. Uh, what does is this kind of butt butt joint right here. Uh, he can go back a little bit. I mean, that's about as far back as you really need to go, right? Uh, and then same thing on uh, him here. He had, does have a thigh swivel. So these legs can go any way you want, really. When we get to the knee, perfect 90, more than 90 degree bend on the knee. Really awesome forward motion and back motion on the feet. 
really, really awesome ankle rockers. They really wanted these guys to be able to hit some dynamic poses and you can, you can tell that they spent a lot of time engineering. Absolutely awesome. And he's gonna be dynamic, he's gotta be. He's got a lot of cool weapons. He's a cool looking dude. He's gotta hit, be able to hit those poses, right? For accessories, like I said, they definitely knew that this guy was gonna be kind of one of their, one of their big hitters. So he kind of goes all out on accessories. One of the coolest things about him, and this actually echoes through the entire line, is that he's got these kind of portholes all over his body. We can see one here on his uh, forearm. We can see it's on both forearms. He's got two back here. And then he's got two up here. Almost every character in this wave, or I should say like a majority of the characters. Um, actually, maybe it's not even a majority. Uh, let me just say several of the characters in this wave have these portholes and they kind of have a dual function which is really awesome in my opinion one is that they can be used to put in some accessories like he comes with this which is uh, a little like transmission thing uh, just like a little hologram and you can put it on his uh, arm right here and then it's like he's getting like a message from home or a message from someone uh, really cool, really awesome accessory piece. This one is unique to him, but several other characters have other ones that are similar, uh, but look different, and you can kind of mix and match if you're interested in doing that. Pop that out. What most of these portholes, though, are for is for holding weapons. So these guys, um, these guys are like little, little sentries, they look like. You can pop those into these wrist pegs as well. I think they look best on the wrist pegs. You can technically pop them into any hole, but throw them on the wrist pegs. And then it's like, he's got like wrist mounted sentries, like ready to take somebody down with these little cannons that just popped out of his arms. I think that's so cool, but I'm not gonna use these on him because honestly, so many of the other guys, especially like the cannon fodder guys, they come with these as well. And so I would rather use the weapons that are specific to this guy for right now, or at least for my display. He also comes with a bunch of pegs that look like these. They're little clear pegs. There's two long ones. This is a long one. And there's two shorter ones as well. And what they do is they plug into the pegs, peg holes that are on some of the weapons. And once those are in there, you can just put those on any of the holes. And now these guys are absolutely strapped. Like they have weapons just waiting. And I love, love, love when you have characters that have like weapons or um, equipment on their bodies. It makes it look like they're actually like equipped to go to battle. So for him, he can have those on his back right there. You can also pluck these off. If you wanted to have a rifle, he can kind of have a rifle ready to go. I think my only complaint is that I like to have rifles kind of up here. And so it would have been cool to have, oh, sorry. I like to have rifles kind of up here. And so it would have been cool to have maybe two pegs up here because uh, these are not pegs, but that's a small complaint. Um, so in addition to those peg holes, like I talked about, he does come with all the weapons that I just showed. He comes with these two pistols. So if you want to have him double um, going akimbo or whatever, you can do that. And uh, then he comes with this assault rifle. Like the wrist blasters, the assault rifle and the double pistols are kind of like base kit for most of these characters in this wave. So almost everybody's going to have them, including the weapon, uh, the extra weapon uh, kit that you can buy. So they don't really stand out to me. What really stands out to me for him is this massive drill. This is the weapon that is unique to Oleg Thygar, and this is awesome. It kind of like looks like a Gatling gun or a mini turret, whatever you want to call it, but it's just a giant drill. How cool is that? He double holds it. I'll do it. I'll put him in a picture later. <clears throat> I'll, ha I'll have him holding it later. But he holds it like uh, like a mini turret. And it just is such a cool looking weapon. Awesome. Absolutely so cool. And it's massive compared to him. I mean, huge weapon. Really cool. I do think this is unique to him for right now. I think that later on... <laughs> Oh, when I just found out this pops off, I don't know if that's intentional, but you can pull that off. So maybe we'll have different weapons or different things later on in later waves that can swap out for that. That'd be cool. That'd be interesting. 
Oh, oh, no, it's that. <laughs> okay, okay. This weapon is not necessarily unique to him. The, the, the drill part is, oh, that's cool. The drill part's unique to him, and this part that covers this, I just realized it's the exact same weapon as the heavy gunner uh, person. Uh, but with this part swapped out with a gun and a chain um, chain ammo thing coming out, out of that. That's awesome. That's so cool. So yeah, it seems like this this drill is even going to be like one of those swappable weapons. Just like Kragnar's little axe thing. You can probably swap out little pieces and parts to this to kind of make custom weapons once you have several different characters who have different weapons in this line. Really fantastic. That's so cool. <laughs> All right, and then getting on to the last of Oleg Thygar's accessories. This is where I'm gonna take off his neck piece. Take off his head. You can pop off his neck. So once you've worked out the neck and the head piece, you can actually swap in this alternate neck piece that's armored. And just, you just pop that in there. Go straight down. It's a little tight. I do have complaints about some of the tightness of the joints on these guys, but we'll talk about more of uh, those probably with the bug men. <laughs> and then you can put this this headpiece back on. You know, it looks really good. Uh, but what this one's really for, in my opinion, is for having him fully suited up. He has this alternate headpiece that has... Let's get it. He's molded, painted head behind this glass helmet. Really cool, really awesome looking fantastic and it moves almost identically to the other head maybe even better up down left right swivels around looks really cool aside from being able to swap out those head uh, possibilities however you want you can also add this little neck piece and this is another piece that's kind of a i don't want to say a gimmick oh. it's kind of included with like a lot of characters in this in this wave but his is painted specifically for him and that's pretty nice uh it just fits right you kind of just snap it on there and it makes a big uh makes a big like dome and so you can have a giant collar on him but what it's really for it's really for you to put Uh, this glass hood on but that's what i like about it is that there's so many options you can have you can have the the helmet on underneath the big helmet you can take this off you can have this on and then because this kind of makes a little bit more sense to me if you're going to have this big glass dome on then let's have his head breathing underneath you know And so this is a character with a lot of options, a lot of cool accessories, and I'm really excited to see. So this is a character with a lot of cool options, a lot of cool accessories, and definitely somebody that I'm excited to have on my shelf. I can't wait to put this guy into like a fight scene in the middle of like a little grave ring in the middle of my shelves, have maybe him fighting Kragnar with some people in the, the background, maybe some guards ready to haul somebody off. Really cool. Popping in here with a little bit of an aside because I realized that I kept saying the word drill for his weapon. This is not a drill. This is a jackhammer. <laughs> Oleg Thygar has a jackhammer. The reason I keep saying drill is because there's another character in the next wave that has this almost exact same weapon, but it's yellow and it has a drill attachment on the end. Uh, for some reason, I had drill stuck in my head. This is a jackhammer. The drill is coming later down the line. But I also realized that I had completely forgotten to talk about his hands. And I think that that's really important because I had to kind of dog on Kragnar and I do kind of have a problem with characters that have these joints kind of already in them. I really just, I guess I'm kind of spoiled on like the Japanese style of joint. Uh, I say Japanese style, there are American companies that do it too, but it's almost always like on Japanese or like import toys that have like these kind of ball style joints that can rotate, you know. I go up and down, all that stuff. Um, but I do really appreciate what Four Horsemen has done here, and that's basically provided two types of every hand. And so the hinge joints are still included, but if you need 
a hand that's going to hinge one way rather than the other, you can swap it out for an identical hand that has the hinge in the opposite direction. So let me show you. He comes with these two hands, gripping hands, just base gripping hands. One set like this, let me focus here. And these are just for grabbing just about anything. And these two have a hinge that goes up and down. So it hinges up, hinges down. Great, right? Same for the other hand. He also has another pair of the exact same gripping hands, but if you don't want the hinge up and down, say you want it to go side to side. I like uh, side to side weapons for like, when I have somebody holding a staff or a spear or a sword or something like that, I want that side to side motion so that they can tilt the weapon down. Uh, he has that. So you can just use this hand instead and this hand swivels, uh, has a hinge that goes left and right. So this way, this way, this way, this way. Same for trigger fingers. So he has uh, two pairs of gripping hands, base gripping hands, and two pairs of trigger finger hands. The two pairs of trigger finger hands have the exact same gimmick. So these go up and down, you know, up, down, up, down. And then this one will go side to side. So really you get to pick and choose what you want. Um, in order to get him to hold this, you can see I had to use uh, a trigger finger hand that hinged uh, side to side. And then this one also hinges side to side. Um, just so that you can really kind of, I can kind of have that hand all the way out there. If it hinged up and down, um, this, it just wouldn't work. It just, I, I don't think that this pose necessarily would work. He wouldn't really be able to hold this gun. So I do appreciate that they at least give you those kinds of options. And uh, I think that that's a good way of doing those hinged joints. If you're going to do that, just throw double hands at me. Now for some size comparisons, we have to start with Kragnar, our reigning champion. Absolutely towering above Oleg Thygar, who is no small boy himself, um, <clears throat> by at least several heads. Just to pull in some familiar faces from last time, we have Monkey King, about the same size as Oleg Thygar, just, uh, this one's just a little crouched down. Um, maybe I should pull him out of that pose, but not now. SH Figure Arts, Denji, uh, again, Oleg Thygar is an alien man, so you know, he can kind of, you can kind of work him in with this scale, as long as you're uh, showing that humans are really tiny. Mezco 112 Collective, kind of a basic Gomez body here with the Black Skull Death Brigade. Oh, which does not want to stand up. Very similar in size. Bit of a taller SH figure arts here. Man, yeah, he is taller. He's almost Mezco size. That's kind of unheard of for figure arts. And then just because I used her in the last reviews, not because she's really cool or anything like that, Sudo Yuchan from the Melancholy Paruhi Suzumiya. Uh, coming in at like even smaller than Denji. Overall, this Oleg Thygar is really cool. I think he's a great release. He's got a lot of accessories, really interesting paint, a great articulation, and an overall great figure. If you're interested in Wave 1 of the Cosmic Legions at all, and this guy's like maybe on your maybe list, I would say go ahead, bump him over. Definitely get this guy. I think that he's really cool. Maybe grab his uh, alternate form too. For this review, that's going to cover it. Go back to my channel and check out the review of the other Oleg Thygar, the prison version. Like I said, the prison version of Oleg Thygar, the review is up on the channel. Check it out. You guys have a good one.